this video lecture is going to be about loops. Now you've already read about the loops, but sometimes it's a little confusing to understand what you've been reading, so we're going to review the information that you read last week in the textbook. Now if you haven't copied and pasted the notes from the website into your Cornell notes yet, you need to stop and do that because as the video lecture is going, you're going to be copying notes into your Cornell notes. So if you need to pause this, make sure you've copied and pasted today's notes the questions for the notes into your page. So let's start with loops. Loops in general. There are some facts about loops that you should know. These are true no matter what type of loop it is. So all loops are examples of iteration. That means they are going to repeat. All loops have some kind of control variable. If it doesn't, it's not really a loop. Sometimes the control variables are easy to identify and sometimes they're not, but they will always have a control variable. All loops use a condition. Same thing as control variables, sometimes it's easy to see the condition, sometimes it's kind of hidden, but it's always going to be there. Now all loops are going to repeat while the statement block, while the condition is true. So that's what one of the common errors were that you did in your reading. It talks about you want to think about when to stop but really it's going to continue while it's true. So think about that when you're going to be working on creating your own conditions. While it's true, the statement block continues. So another way to think about it is until the condition is false. So notice the difference in words, while the condition is true or until the condition is false. That's how often the loop is going to iterate. So I would like for you to copy these bullet points into your Cornell notes next to all loops. Now, we're going to talk about two specific types of while loops. This was also in the reading. There's the definite or count controlled loop, and there's an indefinite or event controlled loop. Definite loops are the first ones we talked about. These are going to be our count controlled loops. So, our, oftentimes the control variable will be some kind of a count variable. You're going to know before the loop starts how many times the loop will iterate. You're basically going to ask how many times or how many numbers. If I say five numbers, the loop's going to iterate five times. It's going to have some type of counter that will be the control variable. So these are going to be fairly easy to create and fairly easy to identify because it's very specific. Count control has a counter. You know before the loop starts how many times, five times, ten times. It's not going to be a question. You're going to know how many times. Now, you want to keep these in your notes so you can you refer back to them whenever you need them. So if you haven't done this yet, go ahead and write down these three bullet points into your Cornell notes. Now let's talk about indefinite loops. We've learned that there's three different types. You've done them in your programs, but sometimes it can be a little tricky. Which one are we talking about? How does it work? So let's just put down some facts. You're going to copy these in your notes. So indefinite loops are called event control. That's because it iterates until an event occurs. You don't know before the loop starts how many times. It might be five, it might be 10, it might be seven, it might be zero. So it just all depends on this event. So what are the different kinds of events? These are different types of loops. So the first one is a target value where maybe you have a total or some kind of variable that's gonna reach a certain number or can't be below a certain number, some kind of target value. And that's one type of indefinite loop. Another one is looking for a sentinel. Now you've had some pretty good practice with this one. You're gonna tell them to keep entering a number until they enter zero or negative one, usually something like that. So you give them a specific value, it's also called a flag. When they hit that, then the loop will, start, will end. And the third type is where you just keep asking them, do you want to continue? Yes, no. I just call it the ask indefinite. So you're going to enter a number, do you want to continue? Enter a number, do you want to continue? This is kind of a clunky thing to do in a regular program, but if you're playing a game, then it's perfect. So think about your guess number game. They went through the whole process, they guessed the number or they didn't. You ask them, do you want to play again? So this is the perfect type of loop for something like that. And make sure you have all of these bullet points written down in your notes. Now we're going to take a look at some examples and see if you can identify 
which type of loop it is. So we've talked about them, you've written down the definitions, but can you identify them? Also, can you identify the control variable? And this part's optional, but it'll give you good practice before the test. When you take a look at these examples, can you label the other parts? You know, increment, accumulate, initialize, those kinds of things. So we're going to switch off and we're going to go over to a Word document. And now we're going to look at these seven examples and we're going to identify what type of loop they are. Over here on the right, I've still got the bulleted list and you should have it in your notes and we can refer back to it as we go. You've also copied and pasted these seven examples into your notes, so you can make some notes to yourself off to the right-hand side about each of these, what type they are, and anything else that you want to identify. So let's start here with number one. And the first thing to look for is, is it a definite loop? So if it is, you're done. And if it's not, we're going to put indefinite and then which type it is. So do we know in advance how many times it's going to loop? We've got an X. It's going to be a first value, but then we've got a total here. Total starts at zero. It's going to go to 10. How long is it going to take? You know, I don't really know. So it's not just a simple counter because I've got a total here. So it's not a definite loop. It's going to be an indefinite loop. So now our question is, is it a target, a sentinel, or a question? Well, you don't really see a sentinel anywhere. It doesn't tell you to do zero to exit or anything like that. So it's not a sentinel. Is it asking you to, if you want to continue? You don't really see that either. So is it a target value? Here I've got total and I've got some target that I'm going to reach. When total is greater than 10, that's when I stop. So this type of loop is an indefinite and it has a target value. That's the type it is. Now can you identify the control variable? I'm going to look right here as my condition and the control variable is total. So I'm just going to have Let's go to number two. So what type of loop is it? Is it a definite loop? Here I've got x equals, I'm asking them for a number, 50 to quit. So do I know when x is going to be less than 50? I don't know how many times that's going to take. It is not a definite loop. It's an indefinite loop. So target value, sentinel, or a question. You can see right here, it tells us 50 to quit. 50 is a sentinel. So the type is an indefinite and it's got a sentence. And what is the control variable? Here's my condition right here, x is less than 50, and x is my control variable. Let's look at number three. So once again, I'm asking for an, a value from the user for x, enter a value for x, x is greater than zero, and then I'm going to decrement x until it becomes less than zero. So do I know how many times this is going to take? It really depends on the value for x, but if I put in 10, then I know it's going to take 5 times. I'm decorating by 2. So do I know how many times this could take? I think so. Let's label this as a definite loop. Let's take a look at number 4. So here I've got A and B. A is, starts at 1, B starts at 5 and I'm going to increment 1. I'm going basically from 1 to 5. Do I know how many times this is going to take? I do. This is a definite loop. Now just kind of compare how this is different from our target value. Let's take a look at number 5. We've got an input number, 10 to quit. That's kind of our clue right there, isn't it? We know we have a sentinel. So this is going to be an indefinite loop with a sentinel. And what is the control variable? Well, I've got x and I've got j. Both of them are changing, so they both could be considered a control variable. Now let's take a look at the next one. I've got a max count right here. How many numbers? While n is less than that number, I'm going to get a new number. And I should have in here, formatting goes out the window sometimes, but n is incremented each time, just like a counter. So do I know in advance how many times? If I say five numbers, will this do five times? Yes, it will. So I've got my definite one. You kind of compare to how it's looking.
And then let's take a look at this one. I've got a, val a variable called continue, and I'm setting it equals to 1. So while continue equals equals 1, I'm going to ask for a number, I'm going to increment, I'm going to accumulate, and I'm going to ask again. So we've got kind of a big clue right here. I'm actually asking the question, do you want to continue? So I've got my definite indefinite loop. And it's the asking. So you're going to put some notes down in your notes about the different types of loops here. I think the trickiest one could be this one right here because you can get a different value for x each time. But I'm always decorating by 2, so you have a pretty good idea how many times this is going to increment before you start the loop. So definitely. Take a look. You should be able to identify the control variables. Take a look at right here. What's our control variable? N or max count? The only one that changes is N. So n is my control variable. And for this one, what's my control variable? Here's my condition, continue equals equals 1. So my control variable is continue. Now lots of other things are happening. I'm getting a new value for number, all this and that. But the one that's determining when the loop stops is continue. So you've got your control variable. Over here, a is the only one that's changing. b stays always at 5. So I have one control variable. This one? we've got x that's changing. So look for your condition, look for the variables in the condition, and which one or ones are changing inside the loop. And you've got your control variable. So make sure you have your notes updated, anything else that you want to put in, feel free to do so, and that is your homework assignment for today.